What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Too Many Opinions Podcast. This is Sarah. This is Jeannie. And let's let me just tell you before we get started into this episode. This is the second time we're recording this. Different right. day, second time. Like it, I got dirty. Do you, it's we're we're stressed, but we're here and we're not gonna come, fall out short, nothing like that. So we're gonna get right into it. I almost did. I'm not gonna lie. But it's all right. We're here. We're doing it, and we're gonna get right into it. So what's the topic for today? Today is topic. <laughs> Sorry, right, guys. No, we're not even going to start it over. We're going to leave it because this is real. Today's topic is, can loving you wrong change you as a person? Yeah. If someone loves you wrong, does that automatically change you as a person? Why or why not? I'm off the bat, yes, it changes you because what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, how couldn't it change you? Mm -hmm. Like, people will get into relationships or situationships, whatever, and fall in love or whatever the case may be and they just come out of it some toxic ass relationship and they're damaged now mm -hmm. and they need to work on themselves to to fix what it is that is hurt them what right do you think? yeah yeah i also think that um that comes from generational drama and curses from like way back in the day because let's say i get into a bad relationship I then get that we have a baby. Then the baby grows up seeing fights. Then I treat my husband bad. We break up, but because of the way we treated each other, now we're on to the next people and we're treating them like that because that's how we were treated. And then again, the children grow up seeing that and then they grow up to be the same way. And it's just one bad move can like just mess up generations upon generations. Absolutely. Upon generations. I so agree. it's, it's, it sucks that that happens, but you also, I feel, need to like, once you understand, okay, this ends with me. I need to get therapy so that you're good for the next person. Because it's not fair that the person's getting therapy and you just continue with your whole toxicity. Toxicity? Toxicity? Yeah. I know. I, that I 150% agree with you. You cannot mm -hmm. go into a new relationship carry, carrying the trauma and hurt that you received in your old one, like in your past relationships. If you're not getting the help that you need, in order to progress and move forward and heal. And healing is not an easy journey. Heck no. Healing is probably harder than going through the trauma. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in the moment, you don't really see it. I mean, I've I've personally been in bad relationships. Heck I mean, yeah, I me too. Like everybody has, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you get lost in the shuffle, right? Like Because you love this person, you almost look past everything that it is that they've done, done or how they've handled things or if you've communicated things and they were just almost swept under the rug or maybe mm -hmm. changed for a day and then it went right back to it. There's some people too that like had all the confidence in the world, but their significant other just broke them to the point that they don't see their beauty no more. Like that they happens. become, some people stay single forever. I, That's even more terrible. That's, because they don't believe that every situation is going to be the same. Which Cause is it's bad. been now. Do you think that you attract that? If you're in that? Oh, that is such a good question. Okay. So I think that if you have not healed, you will continue to attract the same men or women. Yeah. Right? Men or women. I think that if you're not healed, you will attract the same kind of people that you've once dated because that's what you're used to. So when you get into a healthy relationship, it almost seems boring or not exciting mm -hmm. or... You're uncomfortable. That's actually happening to my mom right now. No way. She obviously was with my dad. That didn't work out. And she's used to not being loved. She's used to like, I remember she would try to call my dad like sweet names and he'll be like, don't call me those names. So like, she's like used to like being dry. And now that she has somebody else and he's super sweet, she's awkward as hell. Just know that like kind of like brings tears to my eyes mm -hmm. because that just goes to show how someone loving you wrong can can change you can change you as a person can change how you receive love even as i feel like it changes her my mom was deep to this day best mom ever but even that changed the way she loved us because she wasn't affectionate which because of the same thing you know what i'm saying like yeah. you grow you're with a, i'm with a partner because i'm i'm if you know me you know i'm not affectionate at all but i'm with a partner that brings that out of me and now even though i'm only like that with him but at least I have that, like, the person that I that you guys see here is not who I am with my boyfriend. I become butter. 
melted butter. <laughs> like, I could be a bitch to him, but I be literally, he brings out the most sweetest side of me that I will never let the world see. But it's crazy what a person loving you the right way can do to you. Can I ask you why? Why won't you let the rest of the world see you like that? Um, Because of the way I grew up seeing toughness. And the moment that you're a little bit soft, people take that for weakness. And I don't, I can't stand that. I cannot stand that. I can't stand like being vulnerable and then someone taking advantage of that because then being vulnerable is I will is never tough. be a weak bitch <laughs> ever maybe behind closed doors yeah I feel that I for feel example that. I just cussed somebody out no way who oh. <laughs> actually, I, I actually I don't okay, give a shot I, I, I had you know a few words for someone that you know wanted to talk shit about this podcast but at the end of the day, and the thing with me is that when I'm mad, I get out of pocket. I can openly admit that. I get out. I don't, I forget everything. I forget morals. I forget kindness. I forget everything. But then I cuss you out and then I feel bad. But deep down inside, I'd be like, damn. I, I kind of teed, bro. I, yeah. I'd be like, damn. I kind of, I kind of teed. But just going back to the topic, because of what I saw, that made me into that. And now I have to the unlearn harsh, yeah. how to be that. And then I get worried because when I have kids, am I going to be that? Like, it's hard. That is hard. I feel like for me, I've experienced a little bit of that as well. Like, I feel like I was super soft. But then now I'm back to sort of like. Fuck niggas, get money. <laughs> kind of like that. More like <laughs> Savage Sarah, you feel me? Where it's like, I'm less in the people pleasing phase trying to make everybody happy Facts. and more on loving myself because if you don't love yourself you can't love anybody else mm -hmm. and that goes in relationships and that goes in friendships and but that that's hard too because there's like a fine line with that loving yourself yeah because then you become very 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 selfish where you become first 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 and you're not compromising i feel like selfish is good selfish is good yeah but not that all that, the time yeah that it has to be like a you have to put yourself first because if you don't trust me, if I if if I really started to put myself first, it'd be bad. For who? trust for everybody, really, because I do so much for everyone and I put everyone's needs all the time before mine that it'll be bad for people. A hundred percent. I How think so. How do you so. think the people in your life would react to that? They'll think I'm. Well, they already think I'm a bitch. Um, I don't know. I just think that they'll. It's it's like I feel like I, I make shit happen. You're reliable. Yeah. I feel that. But, re are. but but for the most part, I'm reliable. But then no one really understands what that does to me because I don't speak about, about it. Which is tough. That's You know what I'm saying? Like, tough yeah, topic. like literally, like I'm super reliable, but that's so de detrimental to me. And no one sees that. And so then when I become this bitch or I'm, I have an attitude, it's because of that. Because I'd rather be a bitch to myself and I do project but I'm still handling your problems. You get what I'm saying? Like that's, it's a problem. It's hard. That is hard. That is definitely hard. Um, I don't know. This is, this is interesting. Um, what do you think about the love languages? I feel like love it's languages important. are important. And I also feel like if you're being loved wrong and your love language is one thing and your partner's trying to love you through their love language, that necessarily doesn't work out. A lot of people don't know about that. I just I just recently found out about love languages. I had no idea. And that will save, guys, that will save you a lot of trouble. If both you and your partner, and even you and your mom, or you mm -hmm. and your dad, if everyone took that test to really understand how it is that they like to be loved, and that way, and vice versa, that I can understand how you like to be loved, yeah. that will save a lot of relationships. And yeah, relationships, friendships, everything. I mean, I feel like we may have talked about this in the past, but like Jeannie's not, a hugger, right? No. You're not a hugger. You don't like being touched. No. And when we first met 10 years ago, I was like, ah, oh, Jamie, give me a hug. And she'd be like, mm -mm -mm. like, I could see the fucking cringe coming <laughs> out of her. Like, God damn. And she'd be oh, like, <laughs> I'd be like, all right, give me a real Even hug. Even with pets, I'd be like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So then, like, throughout time, now that we're older, it's like, I learned that even though my love language is affection and I like to be affectionate, hug the people like, oh, and it's not like all touchy feely, but it's like, you know, you first see somebody, whatever, oh, quick hug or goodbye, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but now knowing that you don't like that, I'm no longer like that with you. Mm -hmm. I respect your boundaries. I respect that you don't like being touched. And you know that mine is words of affirmation. So if there's, I'm doing something good and you'd say, oh, sorry, good job. I'm like, 
Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, that's all I needed to hear. That's Let's facts. fucking go. Because with me, I don't care about words of affirmation. Not which, even a little bit. Which is, and I don't even know why it brings me so much happiness to know that you're, like, somebody's proud of me or that they recognize that, I, like, I don't know why that makes me happy. Did you have that growing up? Like, did your parents telling you at the time that they were proud of you? Um. Or it was just more like you're supposed to do the right thing. You're supposed to. I feel like, yeah, we were definitely supposed to do the right thing. I think that was kind of what it is. And I feel like. Stop, stop thinking. Hold start on. thinking. Hold on. Hold on. Wait start a thinking because that all adds up. Ch- childhood trauma. Childhood what? trauma. Holy some shit. shit. Now that I think about it, I feel like I've always been trying to impress my parents. So I feel like. That makes sense to a lot of shit. Yeah. I've always tried to impress my parents and show them that it was good enough. Hence why you try to also impress yourself. Because you don't ever think you're good enough. I as, literally as and like obviously I'm not gonna put your business out there, but with anything like you don't be seeing I don't that you're good enough. I, Rather see with me, my parents never said that they were proud of me, so I got used to that. So now I don't want to hear it. So it's a completely different, completely different shit. trauma with a completely different which is crazy. Side. And don't get me wrong, like my parents absolutely love me, my brother. You know what I mean? Like I'm not discrediting no, them yeah. whatsoever, but it was like it was always a point to try to do whatever I did in the back of my mind was like is are my parents going to be proud of me? You know what I mean? Like, am I going to make them proud? Am which I doing which is why thing? probably you go out of your way to also prove them wrong. A hundred and fifty percent. Yeah. If you tell me that I can't do something, I'm going to literally give myself a fucking million percent push to make sure that it, I do what it is that you think that I can't do because there's no way that anybody's going to tell me you can't do something. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have that that hold over me. Absolutely. What do you think about toxic love? Like, do you think it's something... That you see in the moment, or is it real, or Hell do we just yeah, ignore it's real. it? I think you should like know the the signs of toxicity. I can never say that word, but learn it quickly because then you may be in it, and then just like be like, huh, and then kind of just get used to it, and now you're in it. In and it, that definitely it. happens. And then you a, change. A hundred percent, that happens. You could get into a relationship where it's toxic and. You don't know any better, and you feel as though you're almost like fighting for your relationship. You feel like you're fighting for your relationship. Because you want it to part. work so bad. You want it to work so bad. So it's like you're willing to sacrifice not only your own happiness, but allow them to cross boundaries that you may not be comfortable with. So it's like, what, what do you do in those situations? Like how long or how many times can you tell your partner that, how they're treating you or whatever isn't working for you. I think you establish that when you're first getting to know someone. This is how I like to be loved. This is what it is. There shouldn't be a second chance when it comes to you treating me like shit. Right. Because it's like, you treated me like shit when I... Now, if I didn't tell you, hey, this is how I like to be loved, and yada, 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 and you're projecting your shit on me, maybe we could talk about it. All right, like, I feel like you talked to me in a sticky way Mm -hmm. yesterday. I think let's talk about it today. I don't like that you did this. Please change it. If not, I'm going to skedaddle. Yeah. And if they change, great. Yeah. And if they don't change, you need to go because. So, so like for me, I feel like that kind of like goes into like red flags, right? In the beginning of a relationship and you need to recognize them. And some of them for me is like some of my things that I feel like are so important and boundaries are, I don't like being yelled at at all. Oh, at all. Like I don't care who you are. I do not like being yelled at. As soon as you raise your voice to me. I instantly shut down. I sh- completely shut down. I, I'm now the Sarah that you see right here is not the same Sarah. I the the flip the switch has been flipped. You're no longer talking to the same sound minded, calm wants to have a conversation. I'm now in full defense mode. We're not going there. Same. I also don't like being sworn at. So oh, oh hell why no. don't you fucking get like if you talk to me like that, you're you're automatically at the first sign of you using any kind of vulgar language towards me while in a disagreement you're out there's you're out there's no coming back i will not give you another chance we will not speak about it um there will not be any kind of dynamic going on no. right that so ladies if you don't like those things you need to s- literally make it clear at the very beginning to your partner these are the things that i do not accept I want to be treated like a princess. I want you to literally love me. 
just love me. Just love me. Be nice to me. Be kind to me. Treat me with respect. Do not do these things. And I can't like stress that enough that if you allow those kinds of things to happen, it'll only get worse. Over it's time. only going to get worse. And it's like, yo, men don't realize. And you know what? We're going to. I'm sick of saying both genders. It's obvious both genders, but we, we cater to women on this podcast. So women, like, yo, get it together, honestly. Like, do not stand for any kind of crap ever. There is somebody else that's not going to treat you like, like that ever. Get it together. I'm telling you from the beginning, nip it in the butt. Show them that you're tough because the second that a man catches any sign of weakness from you, you lost them. And let me tell you something else, ladies. Do not tell your new potential partner the things that you have been put through or have gone through in a past relationship. I just sold my coworker this yes, today. Okay, good. Because that is the best advice you can give anybody. The moment that you tell a man what it is that you've been through and the burden that you, the, the, what you accepted in your past relationship Yo. and stayed, they will use that as a pawn, as if they're playing chess and be like, oh, she stayed through all this shit. If I if I treat her like this, now I'm not saying every man is going to do that because God forbid. Because you got to be literal. Yeah, right? God forbid not every man is going to do that. But there are some men who will see that and be like, oh, she put up with mad shit, whatever. She's Same. not going nowhere, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely not. Do not tell them because they're gonna think you're you're going to stick. If they treat you a little bit better than that, then you're then they're good. They don't have to do much. It's more. so crazy. I literally just had a conversation with my coworker about that. Like another thing, if they tell you what it is from the beginning, if they show you who they are from the beginning, please believe them. You are not gonna change nobody. Nothing that you do is gonna change nobody. The only person that could change that person is God in themselves. And Period. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Like, I'm just going to stick another five years because maybe I will change his mind about this. Yeah. You're not. You're not going to change his mind. And guess what's going to happen? Not only are you going to build resentment, hate, anger, you're going to become frustrated. You're going to lose yourself. All that shit is going to pile in. And then it's even worse of a mess. Instead of just accepting him for either what he is and mm -hmm. how it's going to be or letting it go and moving on to somebody else who's going to meet your needs those are your options there's no in between there is no like, not even a little bit of in between it's either yes you're here or no you're not yes you're meeting me here or no you're not move on it's kadado right it's kumbaya whatever like <laughs> leave. Away, go, yes dead ass <laughs> like honestly i can't i hate when girls literally lose their life waiting for a man to change no, 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 no. Like, we're they're not, not gonna. That. They're not gonna change, bro. And I want they're you not. to know that love, being love drunk, is so real that it can literally physically make you sick. Have you ever been no. love sick where you feel like you can't get out of bed? You're hurting. The tears don't stop coming. I'm looking at this camera and I'm talking to every single woman watching the phone. You know exactly what kind of pain I'm talking about. The pain that you feel throughout your body, your heart, your body, your soul feels it. You can't eat. You can't sleep. You just cry. We're not doing that in 2023. No. Okay? No person i don't care if you're gay straight lesbian whatever bisexual whatever whoever your partner is we're not allowing them to have that power over you you need to love yourself right and don't let any man tell you that you ain't good enough because just them telling you that should let you know that you are and that they're afraid to lose you because they're telling you that it's 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 the biggest and when you ask for things you're not asking for too much that they they, they do just do not want to give it to you they're unwilling to give it to you but and they'll give they, it to the next the side one. Oh. In the quickness, because you, you want to know what's the difference with, with the side girls? That they don't give a fuck. No. Nope. And since they don't give a fuck, that's what attracts a man. Mm -hmm. But the moment they see that you you give them too much of a fuck, they don't give a shit. They're like, okay, she's good. She's not going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. She ain't going, that's my, that's my girl. She loves me and she ain't going nowhere. Which you may, but let me tell you, you're not going to be happy, girl. And if he won't do it, guess what? So there's going to be someone else who will. And then you're going to be mad that you that you wasted your time mm -hmm. spending 30 years waiting on this guy to change when you could have been 30 years happy. <laughs> My brother used to Crazy. tell me, he used to say about women, but I mean, you use the reference for men. Men are like buses. They run every five minutes. So if he's not right, girl, you go, you go to find another one. Absolutely. And, listen, and you girls better start shooting your shot. If you see a man and he and that's something you want, you better go and get that. Shoot Don't your wait shot. For them. Don't wait for them. What the hell? Shoot your to, damn shot. And and, and, and you look good because Amen. I'm trying to tell you, you look good, ladies. Amen. Don't ever let someone let you know that you do not look good because you do. And that's it.
That is it. I think this was a great episode. Even though we had to record twice, it came out even better. I'm I so think happy. it did, yes. Um, Sorry about last week. I mean, yesterday. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah. You that guys, was terrible. You guys saw the issue, but it's fine. We're moving past that. Episode three will drop on Wednesday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, you guys are already going to be hearing this, so good luck. Um, and hope you had a Valentine's Day. Oh, it's, it's now... Today, when they're watching this, is now Side Chick Day. Congratulations. Congratulations. If you got flowers today, you know why, motherfuckers. Okay. All right. Well, we're signing off. It's been real. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.